Folks, I want to explain to you a little bit, a, a, a bit of a, a scam that I see happening with the police officers in this country, uh, happening with the courts. Now what happens, people get pulled over by a cop, and uh, if you ask them, they will claim that they are acting as a peace officer, and they're acting to enforce the Motor Vehicle Act or the Highway Traffic Act. Now here's the thing, both of those acts define a peace officer. It does not define a peace officer identically as does the criminal code. So we have two different definitions. What this means is two different statuses. So to distinguish, we're going to call one POA, peace officer under an act, and the other one POC, peace officer under the criminal code. So you get stopped by a POA, he starts questioning you, you ask him questions in return, you don't submit quick enough, and suddenly you're charged with obstruction of a peace officer under the criminal code. But you were never dealing with a peace officer under the criminal code. And there's no uh, crime under the acts for obstruction of a peace officer as defined therein. Now, the courts have ruled that because it says lawful duties in the criminal code, that it is applicable outside of the criminal code. Now, now think about this. The criminal code, these are peace officers who are going after real criminals. They're not hired to generate revenue for the state. They're not hired to ensure compliance with any sort of regulatory schemes. They're going after real criminals. And therefore, obstructing them should have a certain amount of punishment assigned to it. If we're going to hire these people to protect us from criminals when they're investigating criminal activities, we should be helping them, or, or at the very least, not obstructing them. But now what they try to claim is that there are also peace officers under this act, even though the definition is different, which is key, and that us not uh, submitting to their will immediately and without question is obstructing them in their role as a POC. But at the moment of the charge of obstruction, they weren't investigating any criminal code violations. Now think of it like this. If you want to claim that it's any lawful duty, well, what about a peace officer who is not a peace officer according to the act, but a peace officer according to the criminal code, who is also hired to sell cookies? And he asks you, have you bought cookies yet today? And you say, no, I don't want to talk to you. Go away. And he charges you with obstruction of a peace officer uh, in the fulfillment of his duties because he's under a lawful contract and thus has lawful duties to sell cookies. It would get laughed out of court, right? But in this case, these peace officers under the act are, in fact, trying to act as agents for a corporation that sells insurance. And they're asking you, hey, have you purchased any insurance? No, you don't want to talk to me? Obstruction of a peace officer under the criminal code. How is it really any different? It's not. But that's what they do. So I think what would be cool is for someone to go out as a peace officer under the criminal code and get pulled over by someone who's operating as a peace officer under the act and simply ask them, before we start, before we, you ask me any questions, I want to know, are you a peace officer according to the act or the criminal code? Because I want to know who I'm dealing with. Force them to choose to wear one hat or the other. If they say I'm a peace officer under the criminal code, what breach of the peace? What criminal code violation? Don't have one? Goodbye, I'm done talking to you. If they say I'm a peace officer according to the act, fine. Put on your peace officer according to the act hat, and I'm going to put on the peace officer according to the criminal code act. And now don't go trying to take yours off and put on another one. And if anyone wants to face charges, or if anyone wants to bring charges for obstructing a peace officer under the criminal code, it'll be us against you. Yeah, it's what they're doing. It's the trickiness that they use. They use the term peace officer with two separate definitions. One is supposed to be provided with a certain level of protection because they're out investigating crooks, and now the courts have ruled that the people who are collecting money for them must be granted the same amount of respect and def uh, deference, is the word I'm looking for, as much respect and deference as, as does the, uh, the people who try to protect us from criminals. What they're doing is criminalizing, questioning their behavior. So for anyone who is out there who is charged with obstruction of a peace officer uh, as a result of a Highway Traffic Act or Motor Vehicle Act violation, that is the hole in their argument. 
He was never acting as a peace officer, according to the criminal code, up until he has charged you with obstruction. And it is at that point that he's putting on his POC hat. So where was the obstruction previously if he was never acting as a peace officer, according to the criminal code? And if the judge tries claiming, well, he was engaging in lawful duties, and therefore you are obstructing him in these lawful duties, well, then you're perfectly in your rights to become a peace officer, claim that you have a lawful duty to sell cookies, and when they refuse to buy any, arrest them for failure to buy your cookies. Because that's what they're doing. Oh, and the other thing in BC, they're acting as agents, RCMP officers, cops, when they're enforcing the Motor Vehicle Act. They are, in fact, acting as agents for ICBC. ICBC is a corporation. Those violation tickets are, in fact, invoices, according to their own internal documents. Therefore, you have agents who are, in fact, seeking to arrest you for failure to uh, engage in contract. And if they have no contract, they have no right to issue you an invoice. It's called fraud. And since the criminal code defines a highway as a section of road that we have a right to access, trying to deny us that right to access is mischief, another criminal code violation. And then uh, trying to get me to buy insurance in order to exercise my right and threatening me with violence because I choose to not do so, why that's extortion. All of these are clear criminal code violations and there's nothing in the Motor Vehicle Act which entitles any cop out there to act contrary to the criminal code. So I think we're going to test that out. I'm doing some work. I'm going to get myself a little beater out here in BC, going to be traveling around as a duly sworn peace officer with a camera operating, and I'm going to be looking for anyone who claims to be a peace officer according to an act who seeks to contravene the criminal code, specifically mischief, fraud, extortion. And I'm also serving notice on ICBC that if any of their agents attempt to do this, that I see a conspiracy to engage in extortion, fraud, and mischief, and the head of ICBC will be found, uh, well, I'll be out looking to arrest them. I see what you're doing, you know. <laughs>